okay guys welcome back to another video on the channel today we're going to be doing something a little bit different with this video we're going to be giving you some live commentary of the lap as we take part in a special event hot lap on a set of course on the pc version driving the maserati gt4 around spa so i wanted to give you some live feedback just so you can give a more get a bit more interactive with the channel and um, give you some proper feedback whilst i'm driving as sometimes it can vary so i'm going to let the lap start now and we're going to go through the feedback as we're driving Okay, so we're going to start the lap and we're going to try and get the car over to the right hand side just to give us a maximum speed over the start finishing line. So go down into first gear, getting the car over to the right hand side and then swinging it back in for this straight now. So swing the car in hard on the power, going through the gears now. First thing we need to do is look out for our braking point for the turn one. So it's not the first whiteboard on the left, it's the second whiteboard you're going to break just before that. Going down into third gear, blipping the throttle, then into second gear. Little lock up, got away with that hard on the power as early as you feel you can. Back end wanted to step out of it, then we've managed to save it going through the gears into fourth gear. And then we're going to be going into fifth gear just as the reds build up in fourth gear. Into fifth gear and attacking the rouge flat out in fifth gear over the curve on the left, pushing it back over to the right hand side. Then at the top of a rouge, skim that curve on the left and skim the curve on the exit there. So now in fifth gear, we're not going to go into sixth gear because if we go into sixth gear, this car will bog down. Sixth gear is quite high set. Um, we don't want to. We don't want to go in sixth gear. It's just going to slow us down. So looking out for the curb on the left, breaking just before that curb on the left, going down into third gear. Use some of the curb on the entry into that corner. Use some of the curb again on the entry, hard on the power in third gear. Over back over to the left hand part of the track so we can really squeeze the power as early as possible. Into fourth gear as we come out of that corner, and then we're going to break just before the curb on the left there. You see, and then down into second gear. Just try and hug a nice tight line to this corner. Hard on the power in second gear into third gear getting the car back over to the right hand side of the track and then hard on the power as we go through that left hand there into fourth gear and then into fifth gear before we're going to go back down to fourth gear now see back down to fourth gear little tap of the brakes trying to get the car into that curb as early as we can squeezing the power as early as we dare hard on the power now into fifth gear as we come out of the exit of that corner looking for the braking point which is going to be that signpost above us going down into third gear Getting the car back over to the right hand side of the track there, just skimming that kerb. And again we want to skim this kerb hard on the power in third gear, into fourth gear before going back down to third gear, just before that kerb on the left. Back end just wanted to step out a bit, we've got a wave in there, hard on the power in third gear, into fourth gear. And just be careful you don't run too far wide on the left there, it can invalidate your lap. So now we're going to attack this fast left hand, the flat out in this car, in fifth gear. So into fifth gear. And now we're going to try and take this corner flat out. You've got to get your turning in point pretty per much perfect. Turning about there, skimming the apex, use a little bit of curb on the ed exit, and then we'll look for our braking point, which is that whiteboard on the left. Breaking down into third gear, into second gear, then into first gear, just as we approach the apex. A little squirt of power, and then hard on the power over the, over the exit there. And then we're going to go over the line for a 2 minutes 30.5. So not 2 minutes 30.6, sorry. So not an amazing lap but it's an okay lap and uh, i think that'll do for this video we'll go through the setup now and a quick little description of what we changed okay so let's go back to the pits and we'll go through what we changed there so you can see the lap time we just did was a 30.6 about two and a half seconds quicker than the time you need however like I say, when I'm commentating, um, it's not as easy for me myself to drive yet. Hopefully the more we do this, the, the faster we'll get. Um, I'm pretty sure that I could get that well into a, a mid-29 if I was concentrating 100%. Um, but as you can see, it wasn't a bad lap. It was a reasonably okay. A few mistakes, as I pointed out on the lap. Um, nothing major. We got away with most of the mistakes. But um, just some nice feedback for yourselves to see whilst we're actually doing the lap. So we'll run into the setup. Um, not actually changed the setup yet, I think you'll um, actually um, saved it yet. We just made a few basic changes. So gearing, this is what I was saying about the sixth gear. You can see the big big difference between fifth and sixth gear. There's no way you, you're going to be getting anywhere near the, them speeds in this car. So the thing I do, keep it in fifth gear for this straight. It's going to happen on most tracks. You don't Just don't go into sixth gear. It will just bog down massively. So just bear that in mind with this car. Tire pressures. Now, obviously, for this run, we we're only worrying about one lap. I haven't really tested these out for multiple laps. I don't know how much it will cool down. It will all depend on track conditions. Um, if the track conditions, 
I think with the temperatures as they were here, you should be okay with them. They should be about 26 degrees. It should, um, it should be probably okay. Um, if it's higher, you'd probably still be okay because the tire pressures won't drop too much. It's when the temperatures are down to like 18 degrees. That's when you're going to have to just probably alter the tire pressures. Um, I, I tend to rather keep the tires warmer than having the tire pressures higher. Um, I've noticed that you, know, you can say that the tire pressures are in the green. But if your tyres are cold, you're not going to get the grip because you've got no heat in the tyres. I would rather have lower pressures and a slightly warmer tyre in that situation. That's my personal preference. That's just how I prefer the car to handle. Some people might prefer it the other way around. But I just don't really like having too cold tyres. You can have the tyres where they're verging on being warm. So I think um, if they're just, you know, they're on blue, but they're close to hitting that like turquoisey colour they're okay in that condition it's when they start dipping down really low on the on the temperatures that's when you need to start being a bit cautious so we'll have a little look at obviously fuel four liters will be fine for this run you don't need anything more you um, just be careful you don't put anything less in because you won't get over the start finishing line for that for this um special event alignment we upped this the front only very slight to 3.3 .3. Um, toes we lowered the front toes down quite a bit i think they were on eight as default there's the, i didn't feel there was any need to run them on eight four is going to give us a little bit more speed down the straight um might make the tires l more susceptible to locking up slightly but i would rather have the the grip through the corners and a bit more turning and um, didn't touch the cambers on the rear toes slightly lowered on the rear also um, bump stop we up the front by one and rebounds all round. we up them to the middle setting which is one you can only go to two so we just went for a nice balanced middle set in there it feels quite nice um, generic I had the brake bias on 67% and I lowered the brake power just down to 97% just to give myself a little that little bit of um, extra ability to not lock the tyres up um, I don't like to go too low um, if you go down to say 90% you're going to lose too much braking power in my view but 97% you don't really lose too much braking power and you, you just just slightly reducing that chance of locking the tyres up. Um, suspension, we up the roll bars on the front to seven and rear roll bars to three. Lowered the ride height on the rear by two clicks down to 13. And on the front, I think we lowered it down by just the one or, one or two clicks again. Um, that's all you can actually change with this car on this um, for this, this special event. And obviously it's not, being a GT4 car, you can't actually change much. Um, just remember, you don't get, you can't use assist uh, with this car i don't know if you can turn them on actually if you really want to but i'd rather do them as the factory set in state so we're running no assist for this lap so hopefully this setup and a few changes can help you out um the default setup is still okay you should easily be able to get the goal time with the default setup but i just preferred the car to handle the way i wanted it so just made a few adjustments i hope this video has helped you out what we'll do now is i'll leave you a little replay of that lap we've done and I hope you appreciate the live feedback I've given you here. Thanks again for watching and make sure you subscribe for more videos and make sure you give this video a thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. Thanks again, guys.